never forget the excitement in your voice, the head over heels look in your eyes, and the giddy squeals you let out the first day you told me about Cole. I was always rooting for him to find the girl of his dreams. So Charisma, I feel blessed that you can be that woman for Cole. You live up to your name. Most importantly, you make my brother happy in ways I never could. We are so thankful to be a part of your lives and the best dang love story we've ever seen. I don't think there's two other people out there in the world that are more perfect for each other than you two are. For the longest time, I didn't think you were out there. Someone so selfless and caring, so beautiful inside and out. From our first date, I could see that in you and every day since I felt my love for you grow deeper. I promise to never let that love stop growing. I also promise to work to give you the best life I possibly can, to be a better man, the man you need me to be. I promise, I promise to give you my everything forever because you are my everything. That includes little things that I know I suck at, like remembering the little details and putting my garage clicker away myself as we're getting in bed at night. Every ounce of love in me is yours. If I can make you smile every day for the rest of my life, I consider it a life well spent. Oh, you're so beautiful. You're stunning. You like my dress? It's gorgeous. Is it what you expected? No, <laughs> but it's beautiful. I want to kiss you. <laughs> It's finally here. Today, I become your wife, your other half. You have one of the sweetest souls and a smile that makes any day the best day. You have shown me true meaning of patience, commitment, and love, and I fall more in love with you every day. You are my best friend, my partner in crime, the love of my life. I promise to support every creative idea you come up with and to be your biggest cheerleader. I promise to be kind, patient, and forgiving. I promise to listen, to speak, to care, and to pray with you forever and always. I promise that laughter will be a commonplace in our household. Through whatever life throws our direction, like the year 2020, I will always be by your side. I love you. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate you may now bind your union with a kiss and make it a good one. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, that was lame. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, I would like to remind everybody that Jesus' first miracle was to turn water into wine at Cana at his mother's behest. And that is because Jesus wanted everybody to have fun and to enjoy themselves and to celebrate. And today we are going to have fun we're going to enjoy ourselves and we are going to celebrate because this is a most joyous occasion. 
We have gathered here today, 2,000 years after Jesus' miracle at Cana, in order to celebrate another wedding, the marriage of charisma and coal, and to celebrate the fact that they are brave enough, trusting enough, and faithful enough to bind themselves together for life. I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of Charisma and Cole. I am Cole's uncle, John Paul, and I've been his uncle his entire life. And um, I'm deeply honored to be officiating at this ceremony. I'm also slightly saddened because my dad was going to be the officiant originally. And Papa was excited about performing this beautiful ceremony. But Papa is here today in spirit and not in body. And um, we're, we're pleased to have him with us. So I know that Charisma and Cole are grateful to have you here to rejoice with them as they begin their life together. And also, we, as I mentioned, we have Papa here alongside us, along with on Cole's side of the family, Charlene, we have Michael, and we have Lori, and on Charisma's side of the family, we have Carthamina and Manny as well. So, let us pray. God of light and laughter, we thank you for the gift of love and the mystery of marriage that you have given to Charisma and Cole. Help them to feel this moment as more sacred and more real than any they have yet experienced and to acknowledge the beauty of this moment. May they be filled with joy. May they keep their promises with ease. May love and passion abide always in their hearts. And may they always feel the support of this community and beyond, both in tears and in rejoicing. Amen. We have two scripture readings this afternoon. The first one is quite uncommon for a wedding ceremony, but has particular relevance to this gathered congregation. And this is Psalm 18. The cords of death entangled me. The torrential waters overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. God reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. God brought me out into a spacious place. God rescued me because he delighted in me. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13. And this is, uh, is Paul's advice to the young church in Corinth. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is gifted for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. If I speak in the tongues of mortals or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I gift all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, 
I gain nothing. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God. So anyway, there I was talking to my brother, and he's telling me Cole has a girlfriend, and he likes her a lot, and she's super impressive, and they're getting pretty serious, and um, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And so I said what you would, of course, always say in that situation. I said, what's her name? And he said, Charisma. And I said, wow, that is a bold name. <laughs> and it's bold for several reasons. First of all, what if you named your daughter Charisma and then she turned out to be a dud? <laughs> I mean, what if she had a personality like Eeyore, but the name Charisma. And she had to go through her whole life like that. And people are like, oh, what's your name? Oh, I'm Charisma. Nice to meet you. Right? But as we know, Charisma is in no way a dud. She is loaded with personality, and she is indeed quite charismatic. And the, the second thought that I had when I learned her name was, wow, that's a great name, because I thought right away, that means gift. And as I've gotten to know Charisma ever better over the past couple of years, I have increasingly realized that Charisma is a gift. She is a gift from God, first of all, to her parents, and then to her friends, but now she is also a gift to my beloved nephew, Cole, a gift for which my entire family is extremely thankful. Now, Cole's reading, which is unusual for a wedding reading, is also highly relevant because the psalmist express, expresses thanks to God for pulling him from the raging deluge. And Cole is thankful to God for being pulled from the overwhelming waters. And as Cole recovered from those waters, God blessed Cole with gifts, with unusual gifts, with gifts far beyond his age, with gifts of generosity and maturity and wisdom and perseverance through which God, through which Cole, is even more helpful to this world and even more of a gift to this world. Now, in the Christian tradition, we have kind of a unique concept of God. Some people say it doesn't make sense. I think it makes perfect sense. But we say God is three in one, three distinct persons, so perfectly united in love that they are one God. Three persons who gift themselves to one another so perfectly that they are one God. And we have a second belief in this tradition that we are made in the image of God. And to make, be made in the image of God means to be made to love one another, not to find our fulfillment through self-love, but to find fulfillment through loving another, through making ourselves a gift to another. So today, we're not just having a wedding ceremony. We are celebrating the fulfillment of charisma and coal their ability to fulfill the image of God within themselves by committing themselves to one another in love. And I'm absolutely certain that that commitment makes God's eyes sparkle with joy. Now, I would like to make 
God's eyes continue to sparkle with joy by having coal and charisma exchange their vows. This union, charisma and coal, is most sacred and serious. It will bind you together for life in relationships so close and so intimate that now your destinies are entwined. That future, your future together, which we cannot see, it has joys and sorrows. It will have years for asking questions and years for answering questions. It will have its joy and its suffering. You know that these elements are mingled in every life. And so not knowing what is before you, I ask you to state your intentions to one another. Cole, understanding that the covenant of marriage is sacred, do you take charisma to be your wife and do you promise to love her, comfort her, forgive her, and protect her as long as you both shall live? If so, say, I do. I do. Charisma, understanding that the covenant of marriage is sacred, do you take Cole to be your husband? And do you promise to love him, comfort him, forgive him, and protect him as long as you both shall live? I do. So <laughs> say I do. I almost did the same thing. I do. <laughs> and now, Charisma and Cole would like to share their vows. Cole, it's finally here. Today, I become your wife, your other half. You have one of the sweetest souls and a smile that makes any day the best day. Turn page. <laughs> you have shown me true meaning of patience, commitment, and love, and I fall more in love with you every day. You are my best friend, my partner in crime, the love of my life. <laughs> I promise to support every creative idea you come up with and to be your biggest cheerleader. I promise to separate our work life from our personal life because I know how confusing that can get. <laughs> I promise to be kind, patient, and forgiving. I promise to watch hours of Marvel movies with you even though I struggle to stay awake past the first hour. I promise to listen, to speak lovingly, to care, and to pray with you forever and always. I promise that laughter will be a commonplace in our household. Through whatever life throws our direction, like the year 2020, I will always be by your side. I love you. I love you too. Perfect. That's not gonna go. Here I go. Oh, Lord. Oh, I couldn't even read the first word. <laughs> For the longest time, I didn't think you were out there. Someone so selfless and caring, so beautiful inside and out. For my first date, I could see that in you, and every day since, I felt my love for you grow deeper. I promise to never let that love stop growing. I also promise to work tirely to give you the tirelessly to give you the best life I possibly can. To be a better man, the man you need me to be. I promise. I promise to give you my everything forever. Because you are my everything. That includes the little things that I know I suck at, like remembering the little details and putting my garage clicker away myself as we're getting in bed at night. Every ounce of love in me is yours. If I can make you smile every day for the rest of my life, I consider it a life well spent. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna ask the community to rise because we are also 
going to declare ourselves as gifts to Cole and Charisma. Because as we all know, no marriage occurs within a vacuum. So, friends and family gathered here today in celebration of Charisma and Cole's love. Do you promise to support them in their marriage, laugh with them in their joy, weep with them in their sadness, and share with them your collective wisdom? If so, say, we do. We do. Please be seated. Now I understand that you have rings to exchange as a symbol of your union. Who goes first, John? You're going to go first. As you give and receive these rings, remember the vows made between you, for with these rings you will declare yourselves wedded to each other. And perhaps more importantly, by the love with which these rings are given and received, they shall be blessed. Cole, you may take the ring and place it on Charisma's left finger, saying, This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a sign of our abiding love. As a sign of our abiding love. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Charisma, you may take the ring and place it on Cole's left finger, saying, This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a sign of our abiding love. As a sign of our abiding love. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. Before God and in the presence of their friends and family, Charisma and Cole have made their solemn and joyful vows to each other. They have confirmed their promises by the giving and receiving of rings. Therefore, by the power vested in me, I present to you for the first time as a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Cole Alexander Sidner. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. You may now bind your union with a kiss and make it a good one. Yes. <laughs> Charisma yeah. and Cole. You will feel no rain, for each will shelter the other. You will feel no cold, for each will warm the other. There will be no loneliness, for you are now two persons with one life before you. May God, God bless you abundantly all your days together. Amen. Amen. All right, do we walk? You're done. Yes. <laughs>